guys, it is Mr. Dave with the Ray Kitty Creation Workshop, and thank you for joining us for the Ray Kitty Science Project. We've got some fun things we're going to be doing here today, along with some safety uh, kind of guidelines that you can use at home if you are working with some of these materials. Uh, we use different things on the show all the time, from big things to uh, little, uh, little projects. These are about middle size projects. So these ones here are very easy to do, but they are uh, using fire, okay? So I wanna just kind of put that out in front. Uh, as far as the materials that we're using here today, uh, we have some lighters. Uh, I have a fire extinguisher. I'm gonna show you how to use that. Hopefully I, I won't show you how to use that, but uh, we are gonna just kind of show you how you would use a fire extinguisher. Uh, we have um, alcohol. I've got, this is, um, 91%. Okay, so we're going to be using 91% isopropyl alcohol. Uh, you can get that. I would, <laughs> now normally I recommend getting everything you can at the dollar store. Okay, now two things I do not recommend getting at the dollar store. One is alcohol, uh, the other is acetone. Okay, so when we are doing these projects here, uh, go ahead and step up to a different retailer for those just because the numbers uh, from the dollar store are not always consistent. So uh, you wanna make sure that you are getting this from uh, maybe the grocery store or something like that, okay? Now, anytime any of these kind of things are in play, you wanna make sure you are taking precaution. Now, nothing we're gonna be doing here are huge flames or anything like that, but we will be working with fire, okay? Fire is a tool, not a toy, okay? So make sure if you are working with fire and using fire, that you have an adult with you. Uh, adults, make sure you're paying attention the whole time, okay? Uh, and before we even get into any of these experiments, uh, we also have some little tea light candles here that we'll be using and our lighters. Um, I didn't bring my little arc lighter for this one here because we are working with direct flame, so I wanted to show you with flame. Um, the other thing that you can get uh, if you're getting ready to do this one, uh, this little bottle here, uh, classically you would call it a milk bottle, but now it's like a Starbucks frappe or something like that bottle. Um, so you would get a bottle like that. I use those because they've got a nice wide mouth on them. Uh, and for that one, I have some boiled eggs. Okay, we'll open up those boiled eggs in a minute, uh, but I have boiled eggs and I have shelled those eggs for this experiment, okay? Uh, another thing that I have that I will be using uh, is gonna be flash paper. We won't, you may not have that at home. That's something that you can get uh, <laughs> from ma magician sites and things like that. But uh, that's one that we will be using. But the things that you'll normally need for this one here for some very simple ones, I've got a plate of water, some candles, uh, some lighters, uh, and, and different glass containers, okay? You'll wanna use glass for these because uh, the glass is going to have a stronger uh, ridge, so like a water bottle isn't going to work because it can crush. We will be dealing with pressure, okay? All right, so what is fire? Uh, fire is a chemical reaction, actually, okay? Uh, so fire is when something rapidly oxidizes, okay? So rapid oxidation uh, produces flame, okay? Uh, and that flame is what we see as fire, okay? Like this here. Okay, it's a rapid oxidation. In this case, this is the rapid oxidation of the butane that's in this lighter, okay? And oxidation means that it requires oxygen, okay? So fire requires oxygen. So you have to have oxygen, you have to have heat, and you have to have a fuel source, something that you're going to be burning, okay? So those are what it requires for fire. Now, I'm first going to get into a little bit of fire safety. Now, parents, teachers, grandparents, whoever it is that is working uh, with these students uh, or with your kiddos, if when you're going to work with fire, no matter if you're doing something that you've done before, uh, if you introduce that little fire experiment by um, showing some safety guidelines, it gets the kid, uh, the student in the mindset of being safe. Okay, uh, so even if it's something you've done before, even if it's students that you know have used lighters and that have used all these things, you want to introduce some safety practices first because it will get you in the mindset to do that, those fire experiments safely. Okay, so we're going to do that here. Some things that I like to do um, when I'm working in a classroom uh, and we are doing things with fire, rule number one is with our lighters, you never hand someone a lighter. Okay, now 
You never hand someone a lighter because if I've been using this lighter for a little while and that tip gets nice and hot, and then I go to hand it to someone and they grab that tip, one of you is going to be unhappy in a hurry. Okay? So, never hand someone a lighter. The proper way to pass that lighter to someone is to set it down in between you and that person, uh, and you will have your hands off of that lighter. The next person will pick it up. Okay? So, if you practice that, parents or, or teachers with your students, uh, it's just a safer mindset and a safer way to work with that lighter, and it'll result in a lot less little, ow, owie, owie, okay? So, that was a scientific term, the owie, owie, owie part. Uh, so, never pass someone a lighter. You're going to set it down, okay? Now, I'm going to light this little candle here. Uh, and when I lit this little candle, uh, you see that I, I lit it and then I set the, the, my lighter to the side so it's away from our candle, okay? Now, another thing that I, I practice, uh, kind of a lab practice, uh, is never to blow out a candle, okay? Or never to blow out a flame. Now, there's a couple reasons for that. I have this flame here. Uh, this is just on a little bitty candle, little wax candle. Um, so, if I were to blow it out, very little damage could happen. But if I had a student sitting across from me and I were to blow it out, okay, one, I'm blowing all the gross spit and stuff all over that other student. Uh, but also, if this were something that had a chemical to it or perhaps a powder to it, and I can show you, I'll show you in a little while what can happen with a powder, uh, then you can also be blowing flame or whatever in that person's direction. So, what I use and what you can use at home is, in, if you don't have a fancy candle snuffer, uh, is we have right here a little metal spoon, okay? Now, you're not going to do any damage to this spoon. You can use it over and over, but we're going to use our spoon as an extinguisher. So, never blow out a candle or never blow out a flame source. Always snuff it out, okay? And that's for safety purposes. So, what you'll do is you're going to take your little snuffer and poof, there you go. Okay? Now, we're going to deal with this as if it was hot. Now, this is not hot because I just put it on there. But anytime you've dealt with a heat source, you want to treat everything as if it was hot. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to set it down. If I were to pass that to someone, I would do the same thing as with the lighter. I'm going to set it down in between us, okay? So those are some good safety practices. Now, this here is a fire extinguisher. We're not going to be doing anything big and huge today. Uh, but I want to kind of just go over how to use a fire extinguisher. Not, uh, not, not everyone has used them, um, luckily. <laughs> uh, but kind of the basis for a fire extinguisher most fire extinguishers are going to have the same basic uh, build and the same basic way of using them. Now, a lot of them have got a lever on the back here, the ones that you'll see in a lot of commercial applications, but it works the same way, okay? Now, anytime you're using a fire extinguisher, you're going to point it at the flame before you do anything else. Point the extinguisher at the flame. This one here has a valve. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. We're, our, our wonderful team here has passed me this one here. Yeah. So this is a big one that we use in the commercial that they, uh, they have for the studio here. Uh, and you can see that we have the base, same basic build. Thank you for that. That's wonderful. Um, we have our key or our pin. Okay. Uh, this one has got our key here. Uh, and so the same thing is going to happen. You're going to pull this out. Okay. Uh, and then you're going to squeeze the lever. Now, first, this wants to be pointed toward the flame. Always point it toward the flame before you do anything else, okay? Now, this big one here, as I said, you can kind of really see the similarities here. This one doesn't have the lever. This has a button on the top. This one has the lever on the top. You're going to squeeze it, okay? So, step one is you're going to pull the key, okay? Now, I'm not going to pull the keys on these because fire extinguishers are meant to be one use only, okay? So, when I pull that key, that means I'm ready to use it. Okay, so I would pull the key out or pull the key out here, okay, uh, point it toward the fire, or I would have it pointed toward the fire, pull the key out and hit the button, okay? Now, this one here's got this fun little hose that you, it's never fun, but uh, <laughs> this hose that you would use uh, to be pointing at the fire. Now, when you're using a fire extinguisher, okay, uh, anytime you're using a fire extinguisher, plan on using the entire thing, okay? Don't just, psh, psh, oh, it's out, we're good, okay? A fire extinguisher is meant to be a one-use device. Once I've used this, it's gone. It's not, it's worthless after I've used it once, okay? So, a fire extinguisher is meant to be used once and meant to be used completely. Now, if an adult comes by and says, whoa, quit spraying my stuff, then you can stop. But if not, you point at the flame, pull your key, hit your trigger, and just keep spraying, okay, until that thing is gone. 
because a fire can still be underneath whatever it is. There can be flames that you don't see. You want to use that entire fire extinguisher because after it's been opened, after it's been used, then you have to toss it. Okay. Now they have, you know, different ways of recycling them and they can recycle them and use them again, but they're intent for one use once you've started it. Okay. Because then they have to get it recertified and all those beautiful things. Okay. So, uh, that is how to use a fire extinguisher. We're not going to be doing anything big major here, but I just thought if we were throwing in fire safety, it'd be kind of cool to learn or to teach those kids uh, how to use a fire extinguisher. Uh, and thank you for this one. That's awesome. So now we can see that comparison on those big commercial ones uh, versus this little guy here. So I do have one uh, available here. Uh, another thing to notice with your fire extinguishers, most fire extinguishers nowadays will have letters on them. Uh, the majority of them can put out most of the fires you'll encounter, okay? Uh, strange fires are electrical fires and grease fires. Uh, these are both okay for those, A, B, and C, so those will be okay for those. Um, if you do have a fire that involves grease, uh, you don't want to throw water on it. <laughs> you would want to use an extinguisher. Uh, water can just... Uh, <clears throat> cause bigger problems, okay? So uh, that's kind of just some basic, basic fire safety. Uh, you never want to touch the flame. You never want to play with the flame. Uh, I also, if you are using a candle at home with students, a general guideline that I like to use uh, is if you have your candle or whatever's going to be on fire, I use a one hand rule. It has to be at least one hand away from the edge of the table, okay? So if this were the edge of the table here, then my candle would be up here and I would have at least one hand space in between the edge of the table and my flame source, okay? Uh, and that just allows uh, or, you know, kind of saves from them dumping anything flammable in their lap. Okay, so now let's get to the actual fun <laughs> little fire things, but I did want to go over fire safety because that's a fun one. Uh, and like I say, I recommend any time you're like, hey kids, let's use fire. We're not going to say play with fire, but let's use fire. Um, you want to go over at least some safety things because it'll get you in the mindset of doing this safely. Okay. All right. So we have a couple fun things that we're going to do. Uh, we're going to work with pressure, uh, temperature, and volume. If you remember those little PTV sticks that we had before, uh, this, this demonstration, this is an old school one. Uh, this particular demonstration is actually the one that got me interested in science as a kid. Okay, uh, this, this one here is, that means it's probably like 600 years old. So, uh, but this one here, it was before they actually invented glass. So we just had a hewn out, no, I'm kidding. Uh, but this one here was like, okay, there's something to that science thing that maybe it can be fun and it can be something that I'm interested in. Um, but this one here, we've got a bottle, okay? Uh, for this one, we're gonna use this bottle. I've got some paper here. Okay, uh, we're going to use our paper as the fuel source, so we are going to be burning this paper, okay, uh, and we have our eggs, okay. Uh, now, these are boiled eggs, uh, and I have shelled these eggs, okay, so they are shelled boiled eggs. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put the egg in the bottle. Okay. Now, if you're working with your students or with the kids, you're like, hey, yeah, squish that egg in the bottle. So you'll probably want to have some extra ones because what, what you're going to do is you're going to be pushing on that thing. It's going to split. It's going to break and you're going to have egg everywhere. That's part of the fun. Don't worry about it. Boil extra eggs for this one. Okay. Now, what I do recommend is if you have that egg that you've smashed and all those kind of things is to dump the, all of the smashed egg out of the bottle before you do the rest of the experiment, uh, just because it can put your flame out. Okay. Uh, so right now this egg is not going to go into that bottle. Okay. Now if I push it and shred it, I can get parts of it in there. But the reason it's not going to go in that bottle is there is air inside of this bottle. Okay. Uh, if you watch some of our, of our earlier episodes, you'll see where we worked about those air molecules taking up that amount of space. Well, that air is taking up that space in there right now. Okay. So when it takes up that space, it's not allowing uh, for this egg to squish down in there because it would have to smash that air and the egg is actually weaker than that air, as crazy as that sounds, okay? So uh, I'm not able to smash that in there without tearing up that egg. So what we're going to do is we are actually going to use a little bit of fire, okay? Uh, so with our fire here, I have a little shred of paper that I tore up, okay? Uh, and I'm going to fold this shred of paper 
Uh, and I'm going to fold it twice just like that so I have uh, kind of a decent um, little amount of fuel here to burn. Okay. Now this is regular printer paper. Uh, and so when we're burning this paper, again, make sure that you're practicing safe practices. Uh, make sure you have some water nearby so that if you need to put the, put the paper in the water, you're welcome to, you know, you have that available. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to start this piece of paper on fire and we're going to put it in the bottle. Okay. Now when we do, remember how we said that fire is that rapid oxidation. Okay. So it's sucking up all of that, all of that oxygen in there. Now when it does, we're going to create a vacuum. Okay. So we're going to start this on fire. The trickiest part <laughs> in this little experiment here is keeping your paper on fire as crazy as that sounds. Uh, so we're going to see if we can keep our paper on fire. Uh, and so I am practicing safe handling. Uh, I'm not lighting it by my face or by anyone else's face. I'm going to start this little piece of paper on fire. Okay. Once it gets to burning, I'm going to go ahead and put it down in there. Hopefully it continues burning. We'll see uh, if it does, if it goes out, we're going to try it again. So give me just a second. It went out. Okay. So I'm going to get another piece of paper. We're going to try this again. Uh, as I said, or as I mentioned, the trickiest part is just keeping that piece of paper burning. So uh, we're going to try this again. Oh, you might have heard a little boop. Uh, yeah, so what happened there was there was a little bit of a vacuum. Uh, so we're going to try this again. Get that paper burning. Try and get it burning real good here. We're going to drop it in there, drop that egg on there, and see if, oh, there you go. Yeah, so what happened was that egg was now sucked in by that vacuum and it sucked our egg right in there. Okay. Uh, so as that paper was using up that oxygen in there, it gave us enough space that that egg had to fill that space and then was sucked in there. Now, the fun part is how the heck <laughs> do you get the egg back out? Okay. Uh, now this is kind of a goofy way of doing it, but this is the way to do it. Parents, you will probably want to do this part uh, just because you may get some of that mess on you. Uh, so we created a vacuum in order to get the egg in. <laughs> what we have to do is to create pressure in order to get the egg out. We're going to do that with the mouth. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to blow on there and then the egg's not going to shoot down your throat. You don't have to worry about that, but you're going to, you want to have it leaning down where that egg still creates a seal. When you blow, it'll move it up enough to move that seal. And hopefully I can blow on this and then get that egg back out of there. So we're working with that pressure. We're going to increase the pressure in our bottle. Ready? Here we go. Uh, if the veins start popping out on my forehead and I pass out, I'll get back up. Don't worry about it. Okay. So here we go. Oh, there you go. And then our little egg squished right back out. I may have a little ash mustache. If I do, don't make too much fun of me. So we saw there when we increased the pressure, bloop, it shot our little egg right back out. Okay. So you can do this one again. I wouldn't eat this egg because it's got some ashes and stuff on there. Um, but you can do this one over and over again. It's a fun one of working with pressure. Um, and as we can see here, that egg does not normally fit through there. Uh, so that's a fun little science one. This was the weird experiment that got me interested was in science as a kid. So maybe you will uh, inspire <laughs> some children with that one there. Okay. Uh, so that was our fun little one that you can do with a bottle and an egg and some paper. Okay. Now when we're talking about paper, okay, there's different types of paper. Uh, and I specified that that one there was printer paper. Okay. So it's just your standard printer paper. Now that printer paper, uh, is going to combust uh, at a certain temperature. Okay. Uh, paper, the flash point or burning point of paper uh, is 451 degrees. All right. So, uh, yeah, if you're a, a nerd like me in Fahrenheit 451, that is the flash point of paper. So we'll see that paper will begin to burn. So we know that that paper is burning. And if it's burning, it's at 451 degrees. Now this is rapid combustion, but it's not happening super fast. Okay. Uh, it happens. Of course it works when you're not even trying to do it. Yeah. Suck that egg right in there that time. Now, uh, we have a different type of paper here. Uh, and this is called flash paper. Okay. Uh, flash paper has a much lower flash point. Uh, and it is actually nitrocellulose paper. So it has a different weave uh, and it has a chemical on it. And what is fun about flash paper is instead of the way that other paper burnt, flash paper burns very quickly and with no ash. 
Okay, so that flash paper, uh, instead of all that paper mess that you have in there, uh, the flash paper will actually combust very quickly. Uh, you get a brighter flame, uh, and it's actually a safer flame uh, because it happens so quickly. So that's why I was able to hold that and not get burnt. I'm gonna do it one more time just because it's fun. So we'll do this one one more time. This is that flash paper. Uh, again, you can get it from a magic shop. You can get it from, um, they have it different stores online, things like that. We used to have a wonderful magic shop here, but um, now you gotta get it online. So um, that's flash paper. It's nitrocellulose paper. Uh, and just kind of showing you the differences there. If you were to, if you wanna work with an experiment with that, you can do different types of papers at home. Uh, you can do tissue paper, uh, you can do toilet paper, uh, you can do um, like magazine paper, things like that, uh, and, and experiment with the different flame rate on different papers and then try and figure out, okay, well, why did this burn faster? Why did this burn slower? So that's a fun one that you guys can do at home. So that is just requiring paper, okay? Now this one here, and I know I'm going very quickly because uh, I've got a bunch that I want to do here. Uh, I only spilled a little bit of water, so don't tell anybody. Uh, so what we're going to do for this one is this is another kind of classic experiment. Uh, we've got our little tea light candle here, okay? Uh, and a tea light candle will float, okay? Uh, and that's just because it's got that, that little waxes, you know, you've got a little bit of air in there and the density is lower than the water. So it will float. Um, we're going to color this water. Now, if you've watched, watched the Ray Kitty Science Project before, you know that I hate food coloring, okay? Uh, so if you are at home and you are doing an experiment with food coloring or with something that you need to color it, I really prefer to use uh, the little juice packs that you'll get from um, the grocery store. Uh, these are used to flavor water, but they can add a fun color to your water uh, without all of the mess. Okay, so uh, they're not as messy as food coloring uh, and they can still color your water uh, and the water tastes way better than it would with food coloring. Okay, so this one here is another kind of classic one. We're gonna work on that pressure. So remember how we sucked uh, that egg into the bottle? Well, now we have a liquid here, okay? So we're going to do the same little experiment, but instead of the egg, we're gonna put this over our food coloring here. Okay, so I'm gonna light my candle. Maybe. No, I can do this part. There we go. Okay, so uh, now that we've got our candle here, what we're gonna do is we're going to, uh, again, create a vacuum. So we're gonna put this over our little cup of water there, and we're gonna wanna watch right here by this candle uh, to see what happens. Okay, so you wanna go all the way over. So you can see now that as that candle is burning, it's using that oxygen, and it's now sucking that water up into our cylinder here, and we can see that it's actually creating a vacuum in there, and it sucked that water up in there, okay? So as it used that oxygen, it actually created a vacuum and sucked it up in there. Now, when we take it off, okay, with my weird wobbly plate I have here, when we take it off, it's gonna be messy. So be careful with that if you are doing that. So I'm gonna take this off of there, which will release our vacuum. Okay, bloop, there you go, okay? So this is a fun one you can do with even the littler guys. You can have them uh, manipulate whatever your cup or container is. Again, you wanna use a glass container because you're gonna have a real rigid wall there. A water, can, or a water bottle won't quite work for that one, okay? So I'm gonna scooch that to the side just a little bit there. Now, um, our next one here uh, is a fun one and it, okay, uh, is going to be, let me get this, I'm gonna scooch this just a little further. If I spill a little bit of water, don't tell nobody. Okay, all right, so this one here uh, is, I have a mixture, a mixture in here of our rubbing alcohol, 91% alcohol, water, and salt, okay? Now the reason I put salt in there uh, is alcohol actually burns clear, okay? Uh, and so we're gonna want to see our flame for this one now. I have a $20 bill. This is the most I have ever hold because I teach science. So I have a $20 bill. I'm gonna put this down here into our solution, okay? Uh, and I'm going to burn my money, yay! <laughs> oh. Yeah, so um, I, so uh, my, <laughs> my daughter thought that she'd get McDonald's tonight, but I'm just burning our money instead. Uh, so I, I dipped our, our money here. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, uh, and you don't have to worry about the stoichiometry too much, but 
I got my dollar bill nice and wet in that alcohol and water and salt solution, okay? Now, this is very important. I'm going to move this out of the way, okay? Uh, the vapor off of that is combustible, so I want that to be away from where I'm actually igniting this. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to burn my money, yay! Um, I'm a little sad, uh, but it's for science, so it should be okay. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and start this money on fire. Now you can see that the, my money is burning up, okay? So like I am just, hey, wait. <laughs> now what happened there is my money is actually fine. Now you saw that flame, you saw that big old flame. That money was definitely on fire, but what happened was because we have a combustible in addition to that water, right? The water is not flammable. So the water is actually soaking into our bill here. Uh, while the alcohol is burning off of that bill, the water soaks into the bill and keeps my bill nice and safe. Okay. Uh, so my bill stayed safe from that water. So this is a fun one to do with the kids. It's a 50, 50, uh, one, per, one water to one, uh, alcohol, a little bit of salt just gives that flame a little bit of color. Now, uh, our last thing real quick here, uh, and I did this one last because it's messiest. I'm going to get this all over my tablecloth. Uh, what I have in here is powdered sugar. Okay. Now sugar is a carbohydrate. Carbohydrates are very combustible. Okay. Uh, so what's fun about this, this one, make sure if you are doing this one, uh, make sure you have an area that is clear. I have all my uh, flammables on this side because I am going to be working this way. Um, make sure you have an area that's clear. Mainly you're going to have sugar that gets everywhere. So you don't want a bunch of sugar everywhere, uh, but there is also a flame involved. So what I'm going to do uh, is I am going to create an aerosol out of our sugar uh, by squishing this bottle here. Okay. So I've got my flame and I'm just going to bring that powdered sugar up and <laughs> yeah. So we've got a little powdered sugar flame thrower there. Okay. Uh, that flame, what's happening is that because that sugar is combustible, uh, when that, that powder goes across that, that flame there, it lights that sugar up. Okay. So this is a lot of mess. Uh, make sure that you do it safely. Okay. Uh, and if you have any, you know, questions, you can send me an email, but I am Mr. Dave with the Ray Kitty creation workshop. Thank you for watching the Ray Kitty science project. And remember science shows you matter.